I got to go to the home opener for the North Texas Bulls against the West Texas Buccaneers. I just got my second COVID shot at uh, Baylor Scott and White of Dallas. Hashtag doxed. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually got to write an article on the North Texas Bulls website. I'll leave the article in the description below, but let me explain something. So me and my stepdad get there, right? Way mm-hmm. too early. So we actually got to see the water gardens, which oh, yeah. I forgot when Akon was in Fort Worth that one year, me and my ex had gone there. So I knew my way around, but I completely forgot it was Akon was ever in Fort Worth. Really? Because you told me about the story about when y'all walked through the trees and somehow Jesus take the wheel and you didn't get shitted on. I think that was in Dallas. That's totally separate. Was that was that not Fort Worth? I thought no, it was that, Fort Worth. No, that was Dallas. Because oh, that's Dallas. when my uh, mother didn't want to come pick us up during the race. Oh, was that riots. also when the homeless guy threw a trash can at her? No, that was when I was coming home from another ex's house at the uh, <laughs> Greyhound bus station. Oh man. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> too many stories. When you look at my article, the first sentence says, "There's one of two things you can take away from Saturday's game: either the North Texas Bulls are by far the best team in the 2021 Texas Division, or the West Texas Buccaneers." Didn't come to play football. I mean, from what you described, I'm pretty sure you could have made the team. (laughs) Well, what's funny is if you look up the West Texas Buccaneers Instagram, it says to DM them if you want to play. Well, I think you should DM them. (laughs) I do not. And where where are they based out of? Like El Paso. Oh. And they had no Paso. No, no Paso game, did they? (laughs) Yeah. What's funny is the, uh, the kicker's name is Ben Hill. Which he really got to shine this time because if you watch the San Diego Gunslingers game on YouTube, you saw that they were playing in a barn. So you couldn't really kick the ball (laughs) or do field goals or play. So (laughs) You know, it's funny because, man, when you describe this league and I've seen what I've seen, man, it's some real struggle bus shit. What's funny is you look at our, like, look at the Fort Worth Convention Center and the North Texas Bulls. Look at their outfits. Look at them. Look at the stadium and everything, and it's so nice. And then go to any other place in in the division, and it's garbage. Well, obviously, the league decided to put money into that to them, like they did with the Renegades, that they well, were no, the I team th- to win. I don't think it's the league. I just think our owner has money, and other owners don't have as much you money. You say the owner is a uh, a very righteous man, isn't he? Yeah, he's a uh, pastor of a mega church, And he owns other like uh, football teams. Like He owns a semi-pro football team, I believe, in um, Orlando, Florida. So, the Buccaneers quarterback was pretty trash. His name was Turnbull. The whole team seemed trash. And on our defensive line, we have Trey Harlan, which I actually got an interview with that you'll hear at the end of this episode, and Meshack Williams. That's a good name. The defensive line, like, pushed the entire offensive line on their backs, and they all sacked the quarterback. Do you remember when we watched the stupid uh, best position in the NFL, and it was like all versus all? It's like all quarterbacks versus like oh, all Oh, yeah, linemen. yeah, like what they would do in each position. Yeah. And do you remember... In one part of the video, when the defensive line like just pushed the entire offensive line on their back because of how much bigger they were, uh-huh. that's how it was. Like our team is diverse. We have tall people that are supposed to be tall. We have short, skinny people that are supposed to be short and skinny. We have big, giant guys that are supposed to be big, giant guys. Everybody on the team looked like they were five eleven, two hundred. He constantly got shut down by this line until he got hurt, and then the second string came in, then he got hurt, and then the third string came in, they gave up. Well, here's the thing though. And something like this at such a small league, and something that's starting off again, like in his arena football. Because yeah. we, we remember when we were younger, actual arena football was actually big at one point. Yeah. You had the Dallas Desperados. Dallas you had Desperados, all yeah. But Trump had his team. Yeah, here's the thing, though. Uh, when you think about it, though, the actual people that are like of very A1 talent are obviously going to the NFL. And then your second string after that is CFL, the European League, and xfl as soon as they return yeah and then you know they're kind of getting the scrape off the stick on this one where you're getting the third rate athletes right that are not superstars in either one of those leagues that can maybe be a superstar here so you're getting really close to just guys walking off the street i mean yeah trey and meshack are definitely stars within the league there's no doubt about that and even the kicker is fantastic now (laughs) the Center or the snapper and the ball holder both look and act like Tony Romo, oh. and they're um, they definitely need more practice. But the kicker himself has done good. Speaking of kickers, the Buccaneers kicker was a lineman, so he would get on the line and go kick. Yeah, like <laughs> he would play offensive, defensive line, and then kick. Man, this really sounds like a high school game. I mean, you're supposed to have like 
15 players and they can't, or no, you're supposed to have like 30 players and then they came in with like 15 and we're like, <laughs> actually, uh, Kenny pointed something out, my stepfather. He was like, why is one of their players' helmet a solid color and doesn't have a logo on it? And I was like, that's a practice squad member. So he didn't even get a fucking helmet. <laughs> he had the practice squad ridiculous. helmet on. <laughs> Someone couldn't get him a helmet. <laughs> no. Yeah, so the lineman drop kicked it instead of kicking it off a tee. And it went right into the hands of Dwayne Audrey, which ran it back after juking like six guys. It was just a bloodbath. Like... Play after play. I think even one time we did an onside kick just to be even more of jerks. Did they do like the, you know that what's big in the league right now is the watermelon technique? Do you know about this? I don't. Oh, that's right. You boycotted the NFL this year. Yeah. Okay, so no basically the regular onside kick would be like, you know, you basically stand it up on the thing and you kind of hit it from the side to yeah. go onside. But apparently the new thing, the watermelon, I didn't know there wasn't a restriction on how you put the ball. You put the ball on the side and you kick it like that. That's the watermelon, and it makes it spin and stuff. And uh, I yeah. mean, I'm not really that big into football, but it's something about it. It's actually more of a return on that, so it's actually easier to re- get the ball back. Because I remember back in the day when the guys would do the kickoff, these guys would be so used to kicking them full field that it would go basically make a fucking field goal on the other side yeah. of the field. What Hill did was kick it way up, so then it came down. Hmm. But again, like at the other arenas, he wasn't able to do that because the ceiling was so low. Yeah. But at the convention center, it was basically uh, in the room that like artists or the dealer's room is in. So this huge area and they just made it into a stadium and it was pretty, it was pretty cool. It's pretty nice. We'll see what happens. I think we have a very good team and we're definitely going to win the Texas division. Yeah. I didn't know there was anything past the Texas division. Yeah. This is an expansion team. The, the league has been around for like six years. Oh, yeah, that's going to be really hard, especially if you have to face a team that's been together for, well, mostly probably been together for six years. It's not the whole team, but, you know. Yeah. And that's that's the thing about leagues like this, and we talked about the XFL and stuff. It's You're never going to have really, like, long-term stars because once they become a big star in their own league, mm-hmm. you know, you can never really be a lifetime career if there's always a stepping stone above it. Yeah. Because you might do, like, you were here, you were killing it, you went up. Didn't make it there and come back down, but right. there'll never be a time where I mean, it there just could stay. be, it, especially some of the older players that we have in the league. Um, I don't see them leaving. Actually, I think our our quarterback that is like forty years old. I think he played for a few other teams in the league. We're gonna cut it over to my interview with Trey. Hope you enjoy. So, what's your name and uh, position for all folks at home? There you go. So, coming into this game, what was your mindset, and did you think it was going to be a blowout the way it was? No, I didn't think it was a blowout. We didn't want to take no team lightly. Right? We, we came out and we played our game. Whatever we can on our side, we're going to take care of it. We're going to take care of it. If you were part of the football team, it's all we can do. Gotcha. One last question. Who's the ugliest player on the team? Ah, Chris Franklin, you got called out. All right. 